Near the center of the country, within the northern reaches of the Missouri Ozarks, you find a dream lake, a hidden treasure, and the welcoming waters of Lake Placid, Missouri. Lake Placid is a resort, summer, winter, fall, spring. Look how beautiful it is. Just listen, it's just peaceful. If you ever come down during the autumn season when the uh, changing of the colors, you see the, uh, what I'm talking about, the beauty of uh, the leaves changing to orange, yellow, red. But the fun part about being down here is uh, hiking in the woods. That's the fun part. Peace and freedom. <laughs> like for instance, the cell phones, you can't use them here. It's like Alaska of the Ozarks. It's the last untouched real part of it. My grandfather uh, uh, purchased a lot in 1938. My mother has been coming down here since she was a little girl. So as far back as I can remember, we have been coming here. And my brothers and I would come down here and stay with my grandfather uh, for the whole school summer. Our family always, we, we, we're big on like vacations, and, you know. So when my grandmother, I believe, was the first person to get her place here, and then after that, you know, we all just started following, flocking with her, you know. I finally found somebody that sold me one, and when they sold it to me, I jumped on it like a chicken on a worm. This place came about at a time when uh, things were very segregated. It's uh, historically very significant and interesting. My uncle is uh, P.C. Turner, who was uh, the founder of Lake Placid. He was a physician and he was a surgeon. He was over the, the hospital number two, uh, which was the black hospital. He was an avid hunter and a fisherman and uh, while on a, while a group of a small group of them were in the Ozark area on a hunting trip, he found out about this land. People like uh, Poppy Hughes, my children's grandfather, went to Minnesota to do trout fishing. A number of the Kansas City people went to Michigan to a, a black resort called Idlewild, and Dr. Turner felt that there ought to be a place in Missouri that blacks could have. At the time he thought of that, Bagnell Dam was being built, and he knew that Bagnell Dam and the development of the Lake of the Ozarks was not going to be available to black folks. Blacks couldn't go to the big lake. They weren't permitted to buy property. Uh, they weren't permitted to go at all. And there were three of them to begin with that was going to buy it, three friends of his, and two of them, both two of the others, backed out when it came to the financial part of it. On October the 8th, 1934, during the heart of the Depression, in the second year of FDR's term as president, was the day that two white men so 346 acres that became Lake Placid. Wilma Chandler is the granddaughter of the man, Mr. Blackman, who sold the property to Dr. Turner. Wilma liked to say that it was interesting that a man named Blackman sold the property to a black man. This is just a big spring where a lot of activity and all took place for years. This was written by Ralph Blackman when he was growing up here. The big spring was an important source of water and a recreation center. From the most of the Blackmans and the Hotman cousins, they were regulars here during the springtime Easter egg cooking and also picnics. Through the efforts of Reed Blackman, a dam was built over a quarter of a mile below the spring. The valley was cleaned out and something like a 40 acre lake was formed with water just above the dam being 20 to 25 feet. It is called Lake Placid. There are cottages built around the shore today, but it was once the playground of the Blackman family and it is now a playground of the black men. Part of the employment of it was through the WPA and they hired local uh, farmers that, and it gave them an opportunity to work. 
When the cabins and all had to be built down here, it, it guaranteed more work for the cement people, the carpenters and the sawmills. And the older people that was around when it started wouldn't believe what it's like today and the enjoyment that people have gotten out of it from just a spring. We came down to fish, to uh, have family uh, gatherings, and to just see people we hadn't seen in a long time. We'd come together here because it was so uh, relaxing. We used to have so much fun, and like we would go to house to house, like Mamie might fix a dessert, then you go to another house and they might have a main something fixed, and we eat it and just travel. And then the house up there, the king's house, they would end up up there and they would have drinks, and they would fry fish in a big tub outside, and we would just have a good, good time. It was primarily, and I'm not gonna say solely, but uh, people that were professionals uh, in the area of teaching and uh, medicine and uh, lawyers. Uh, there were some business owners who had places, and other people that, that uh, had an ability to uh, pay and had a desire to live in the wilderness, if you will. This began in a segregated society by some people that didn't care about color. It was about having a place to enjoy the same privileges that fellow Americans had. Mr. Snell was the caretaker uh, of the property, and he lived up at the top of the hill. He used to have this great big book, and whenever any guests would come down that was at any of these uh, cabins, he would go around and have them sign the book. When Mr. Snell died, his grave is in the cemetery, but very close to the road. There are always flowers on Mr. Snell's grave. And on Memorial Day, the granddaughter of the man who sold the property to Dr. Turner is who places those flowers. As his tombstone said, a friend of man, he worried about me having to walk so far to school by myself as a child. He said in the city that was unheard of. But here, he said this little girl walks three miles to school. So I just remembered him. <laughs> well, right now we're working on various projects. Uh, the bridge is one, uh, doing certain things to it to uh, uh, basically keep it uh, going for the next 30, 40, 50 years. My prayer is that the young people come help us build this lake back up, start buying cabins, start building cabins, start rehabbing cabins. The few of us that come all the time, we need help, but you know what? You can't make anybody do anything. They gotta fall in love with it like we did. Everybody's offspring falls off and then let go, and they don't have that desire that the old people had. The people in Lake Placid, since I've been around, some of them pay dues and try, but if they will ever get together, this place can come back up. I would get the roads and the bridge in condition, in good condition. That's the only thing that bothers me. I'm probably one of the people that like it just how it is. As far as the past, and we had to look at it and know our history and keep going. History is beautiful, but I would like to see people actually get this place together. It's a subtle tug of war between the simple desire for peace and quiet and the need to make progress and it'll be the cabin owners and the prior family who will determine the future of Lake Placid. This ain't heaven, but it's a long, 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 long way from hell. Don't get hooked.